right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So I'm on my orthopedic surgery rotation right now and thought I'd bring you guys along for the day. It's a little different than my other videos in terms of what we do. So thought you guys might all be interested. So it's currently quarter to seven. I started about an hour earlier than I usually start. Just the orthopedic team starts earlier in their bedside rounds when we go talk to patients. So gonna do that now, head to the hospital. So bring you guys along for the ride. Starting to get lighter here in Ireland. It's not even seven, birds are chirping. Good news all around. All right, so it's end of February. I sometimes wake up with a bit of ice on my windshield, but don't have a scraper here in Ireland with me, so kind of just let it heat up on its own. And of course, in the meantime, got the coffee. This one's my siblings on that side, and I'll flip it over. Parents on the other. You probably saw that in my Christmas video, but favorite coffee mug. The bedsides. So orthopedics is a subset of surgery involving the musculoskeletal system. And this system in your body involves all the bones, cartilage, connective tissue, ligaments, tendons, and muscles. Orthopedic surgeons treat patients by both surgical and non-surgical means involving the musculoskeletal trauma, spine diseases, sports injuries, degenerative diseases, congenital conditions, etc. So on a typical day, we do our bedside rounds, meaning we talk to patients at their bedsides and see how they're doing and check in on them. We start about 7.15 to 7.30 and they could last up to 40 minutes because we have about 41 to 42 patients each day to talk to. So you can imagine that it takes some time to talk to them, see how they're doing. So the majority of our patients are elderly on these bedside rounds, brittle bones, they fall easier. So a lot more fractures and also so a lot of radiculopathy, meaning damage or injury to the nerves as they exit the spine and the patients can present with a variety of different neurological manifestations. Yesterday, I planned on doing a whole day video, but things don't always go as planned. So I figured I'd just do clips when I can film them. I really didn't have much time to film them yesterday. So whenever I do have time, I thought I'd pop on here and share with you guys what I'm doing. I could talk about previous days and what I did as well as what I'm doing right now as well. So right now I'm just watching the ACL reconstruction and learning a lot and I'll show you guys right here. All our speed trap devices to entrap the tendon. All right, so I just finished reading up and watching some videos on ACL reconstruction. So hopefully if some of these senior doctors ask me some questions about it, I'll be good to go. So right now I'm gonna go talk to those patients that are actually getting the ACL reconstructions, get a history from them and do a pre-op assessment. So touch base you guys after that oh and i should mention yesterday just so you guys have a perspective of how the day can vary yesterday after the bedside rounds i got a lecture on the hand actually so one of the senior doctors i work with actually went all the way to india and worked with a plastic hand surgeon there and they worked with a lot of individuals that have leprosy, also called Hansen disease. And this is caused by a bacteria and can lead to a number of different neurological manifestations. And we also talked about the general anatomy of the hand and specific lesions that can occur and what movements in the hand might be impeded as a result of those lesions. So it was a very short 15 minute lecture with the team, but a good addition to my day and an extra bit of learning for me, so. All right, that was good. Sorry, I'm in my theater scrubs right now you gotta wear special ones when you're in there so yeah i checked in with the patients before they're ready to go for their operations multiple patients are having acl reconstructions acl is a ligament in your knee as i mentioned and basically they're having a reconstructive procedure with the graft from another part of the body replacing the ligament so you can take that from the quad from the hamstring and the achilles and other areas in the body so patients are ready to go for that let's go hop in on one or two of these procedures so i'll talk to you guys after so that was good surgery. 
Uh, this, we had a young patient, I think he was 27 years old, who hurt his ACL when he was playing football or soccer, I guess, in North America. And he kind of planted his foot, twisted it, and heard like a popping sound. So he blew it completely. That happened last September. So he's kind of been managing it up until now and just started walking as of November, I believe. But it's still pretty unstable and you can't run on it. So he had an elective surgery obviously now though he kind of is only getting it fixed now for long-term recovery and stability in the future the procedure is pretty cool it was pretty accurate to what i read up on beforehand in the videos i saw except in this case they used his hamstring as a graft so basically they replaced his acl with part of his hamstring and used that as basically a functional acl and they did that on the same side of his injury the video that i watched they used uh, the quadriceps tendon so it was a little different than what i saw but that was a procedure really good to be in on that one just doing a bit of reading now until lunchtime while i'm waiting for my friends so catch up with you guys in a bit uh, starting nice job too. Him, great. Awesome. Awesome. all right so just got back from lunch we had a free lunch today because we had journal club and that's for anyone in the hospital to attend but basically doctors do a presentation on either a patient case uh, so a case study or they can present on research from the literature on a variety of different topics and today's topic was on heart failure and some of the medications used to treat that so i actually learned quite a few things today in that presentation and there was a free lunch as well which is always an added benefit you know good sandwiches coffee fruit desserts a lot of different things so really good lunch today so now i'm going to go to another acl reconstruction procedure and then after that at 2 30 i have teaching this teaching is actually not orthopedics related it's general surgery related which has comprised the majority of my rotation in surgeries one of the doctors on our team offered to do a teaching session and it's going to be on vascular disease so blood vessels in the body and urology so anything to do with the urogenital system from bladder to kidney, urethra, etc. So should be pretty interesting. Excited to learn a thing or two from that. And not really sure what I'm going to be doing after that. It's going to get closer to the end of the day. So check in with you then. I also realized I forgot to mention that I probably spent about half an hour with one patient today, an 87 year old gentleman who unfortunately had a neck of the femur fracture. So he had a hip fracture and he had a partial hip replacement as a result, but incredible guy. He reminded me a lot of my grandfather, just such a nice person to talk to. And unfortunately his wife passed right before the hip fracture as well. So he's heading home today. And it's gonna be kind of sad for him because one of the first times he's gonna be home without his wife. So felt really bad for him. But, you know, I guess one thing I wanna say is in this position, you know, there's the whole medical aspect of, you know, treating patients and everything, but a lot of it, there's an emotional side as well when patients are grieving. And it's up to doctors to be there for those patients as well. And, you know, my conversation with this patient today hit really close to home. And I feel like I really did make a positive impact on him and, you know, brighten up his day a bit as he heads home for the first time without his wife. The teaching is gonna begin soon, so gonna be doing a bit more reading. Really good book, it's an Irish book actually, so for any of you people in Ireland or studying in Canada, probably get it anyways, it's the RCSI Handbook for Clinical Surgery for Finals. Really good for reading during the surgery rotation. A lot of my studying has been from this book, highly recommend. <laughs> Another day, another dollar. Another not dollar, actually. Don't get paid for what I do. All right, guys, so it's almost 5 p.m. right now. Wrapped up my tutorial about half an hour ago. Went longer than I thought, but well worth it. It was a really good tutorial, about an hour and a half. And we did it on vascular surgery and vascular disease. And we also did another presentation on bladder cancer and other urological disorders. So that was done by one of the senior doctors here. Really good and really interactive too, and felt like I learned a lot. So good way to cap off the week here. Did about a half an hour of studying before heading out of here. So it's about 5 p.m. like I said. Gonna head home now and I'll touch base with you guys at home to wrap up this video. Just wanna talk about a few things that I did earlier on this week that I didn't touch on now. Doing a day in the life of a medical student in a particular specialty can be difficult because each day is different. So I figured I'd wrap up this video talking about 
how some things earlier in the week were different than maybe what I did today. And also some of the procedures that I got to go in on uh, in theater. So that's it for the hospital and we'll see you guys at home to wrap this up. All right guys, so I'm back home now from the hospital. Had a really good day and certainly a long one. And I wanted to just pop on here and talk about a few things I did earlier this week that weren't covered in my day today. So yesterday my morning was a bit different than a typical morning I'd have in the hospital. I spent most of the morning in the outpatient department or clinic, and this is for patients who attend the hospital who are requesting treatment or a consultation but did not stay in the hospital previously overnight. In ortho, this involved following up with patients who previously had a fracture and looking at their x-rays and seeing how they are progressing and healing, and also patients with chronic back pain or muscle pain as well. Just to name a few of the things the patients would come in with. Now I wanna go over a few procedures that I was able to scrub in for, meaning I was able to get as much involved as a medical student can get involved in the procedure, but I was right by the patient, right at the bedside. So the first procedure that I scrubbed in for was on Tuesday, and it was for a revision of a total hip replacement on an elderly woman. Basically this means that her hip was totally replaced with a prosthesis, and there's something called a constrainer that adds stability to that hip and that was dislodged, which caused the prosthesis to also dislodge. So revision meaning we kind of had to fix things up and make sure everything was back in place. The procedure took about four hours. It was absolutely exhausting, but I have a reaction to the procedure afterwards because I was absolutely exhausted and it was the first real procedure where I was in for that long. That was good. Very, very good. Yesterday I was in for two procedures and the first one was something called a Liz Frank injury. And this is just a injury of the midfoot. So it required repairing that injury. And the second one was a reconstruction of the hind foot due to a fracture dislocation and subluxation of the ankle. So those three procedures along with the ACL reconstruction procedures I was in on today have been a really good experience. And I like that the ortho team has got me really involved and I've been actually scrubbing into these procedures and not just watching on the side. I feel like the learning aspect of it is a lot better having scrubbing in. So really grateful for this experience and I feel like I am learning a lot as I mentioned. And I just wanna say that orthopedics has been something that I really enjoyed this week and I think I kinda of knew I would enjoy prior to me starting this rotation. My prior degree was in kinesiology, if you listen to my first video, and I've always had a passion for the human body and orthopedics is definitely something that I could see myself going into so stay tuned for my journey and overall really good experience and the people i've worked with this week have been super friendly to me and made me feel like i was actually a part of the team and getting me involved as much as i can lots of teaching and like i said feel like i've learned a ton so really grateful for this week but that wraps up today's video hope you guys enjoyed and got a perspective of what orthopedics is like and i know for me i certainly really enjoyed this week so if you enjoyed watching the video, please like, subscribe, you know the drill. We'll see you in the next one.